New Orleans, one of the most unique prized cities in America. Throughout the centuries, the city has seen its fair share of problems, including, of course, one of the worst natural disasters in American history, Hurricane Katrina. Ever since the hurricane struck two years ago, the city has been rebuilding neighborhoods, schools, and businesses that were devastated by the storm. I'm Zach Pentel with Campus Progress. Days after the hurricane, President George W. Bush traveled to New Orleans and promised to rebuild the city. But the government's response has been infamously poor, and since then, residents say that they haven't gotten much support from Washington. So the real question is, who's rebuilding New Orleans? Back in January, I traveled down to New Orleans to see what kind of progress the city had made. FEMA trailers, considered temporary housing for hurricane victims, are still in use all over the city. Public schools and public services are in shambles. But as the government continues to fail New Orleans residents, student volunteers from local universities like Loyola and Tulane, and from schools across the nation, are doing their part to rebuild the city. There's just a general kind of, um, a general kind of activism on campus. You have a, a group of kids who are aware of the, the situation and who are activists on, you know, they're, they're spokespeople for New Orleans, they're ambassadors for New Orleans. When they leave the city, you know, they'll go up and I think wherever they go, they'll spread awareness of you know, the issue of New Orleans and that it's not solved yet and that it's, it's still very much a, a national concern. On a 70 degree January day in the city's French Quarter, college football fans were ramping up for the BCS championship game between Louisiana State University and Ohio State, which would be held later that night in downtown New Orleans. It was a significant event considering the devastation that took place within the city's Superdome two years ago. But across the city, Students from Hampton University in Virginia were experiencing a very different side of the city's long road to recovery. The students, part of a student organization called Black Campus Progressives, made the nearly 16-hour drive down to New Orleans during their school's winter break. Sponsored in part by Campus Progress, the students were charged with the daunting task of completely gutting out a flooded home. I'm just kind of excited to get down here. You know, I've always wanted to help out anyway, but having an opportunity to do it through school was even better, so. Gutting a flooded home is not an easy task, but it's necessary in order to save historic houses like this one. After sitting dormant for over two years, this house is filled with lead particles, asbestos, and mold. Volunteers have to wear protective masks and jumpsuits in order to protect themselves. You won't believe, guys, this actual area was had furniture still in it. There was actually four couches still over in that area. There was a bedroom, like there was actually still furniture. Everything still here, still clothes, literally everything you could think of was still in here. This morning when we first got here. Now, this is actually um, a hallway, and these were two separate rooms, like closets, storage closets. They were completely filled. There was water still in there, water still inside the uh, containers and everything. So we put, we gutted those out. There was actually water still inside the light fixtures. It was kind of emotional for me, actually. But this is somebody's entire house, and they left it thinking that they were only going to be gone for three days, you know, at most. And they've been gone for two and a half years. So everything was left exactly how it was. Like you had a um, stroller by the door, like glasses on the table, literally. Everything was left how it was. So that was kind of, that was kind of a down, not a downer, but it was kind of like a reality check. I haven't seen everything, but even from like seeing it here, I see a lot of, a lot of these houses, like people are still living in, but then there's a house right here we're working on that hasn't been touched. So seeing that is a, is a big um, experience for me. That's a big, you know, uh, change. I wasn't expecting any of this. For neighborhood residents like Teresa Smith Sylvester, the volunteers are still a welcome sight. Oh yes, it has been a blessing. People from all over have come in the neighborhood, they come, do houses, they even clean up the whole block, the streets, everything. Yes, they have. So I tell people that if you're coming to look, but come to give a hand too. And for students, it's easy to find out how to give a hand. Once in New Orleans, Hampton University students met with a nonprofit organization called the Association of Community Organizations for Reform Now, or ACORN. We give you all the information, you know, places to stay, like discounted housing for volunteers, what you need to bring, um, and then when they come down, you know, we take the groups out and show them how to get a house, basically. 
it's like a race against the city. You know, if we can beat it, beat the city from knocking it down and get it gutted, then it'll be fine. The Hampton University students made a point to head across town to see the infamous Lower Ninth Ward, the neighborhood that the hurricane's floodwaters reduced to little more than rubble. It's it's you know it's heartbreaking. Right? Um, you, you hear on you, you hear less and less on the news about this, so you, and you know in my mind like I'm thinking about how you know you know it's still kind of bad. But in my mind, I kind of restored it to what it was before when I'd been here. But then just to just to cross the border again, it's like, it's heartbreaking still. Yeah. They, they really don't talk about this at all. They just talk about how it's good now. Like, even it was a few months after, they were talking about how it's good now. And don't worry about it. I mean, as far as the media, the media is going to spin things all the time to get, you know, to, to try to manipulate what's important and what's not important. A lot of times we, you know, we experience that it's not important, you know, depending on what social economic class or status you come from, it's not important, you know. They think it should look different because according to them, according to what they see on TV, you know, it's finished. Like, it happened. It's a couple years later. Things are fixed. New Orleans is back on its feet. But then we take them to places like the Lower Nine. Everybody says seeing is believing. Yeah, and seeing is believing. I can't believe it. I I can't believe it. I'm glad I came. I can't believe it because I needed to see it to believe it. And that's because our media doesn't portray what's really going on. The lack of attention wore thin on many people, not just college students. Among them, actor Brad Pitt and his wife, actress Angelina Jolie, now call New Orleans home. And to do his part, Pitt launched the Make It Right initiative. With sights set on rebuilding the hardest hit neighborhoods, Pitt and his organization launched the Pink Project an initiative which filled the Lower Ninth Ward with pink mock-ups of homes to represent the way the neighborhood once was and the way they hope it will be once it's rebuilt. At first, these house-shaped pink fabric structures were strewn about the neighborhood, and as donations from the public rose, the pieces were assembled into house-like shapes to represent the real homes that would soon be built in the same spots. As we drove through the neighborhood, I recognized a single rebuilt home I'd seen on a trip to the Ninth Ward six months prior. You know what? We drove right past here last time we came through here. Mm -hmm. And that was the only house that was there, that one right there. And while today the street was bustling with tourists and passers-by, six months ago it was a different story. The neighborhood was deserted. Oliver Carter is a volunteer consultant for Make It Right. Well, we're going to break ground within the next couple months on a pilot group of 10 houses. And uh, those are going to be uh, designed just in order to kind of work out the kinks, give us a, a basis for revising our predictions and estimates. Um, the second phase, after that, will be we're hoping for 150 houses over the next year, maybe two years. It's really going to depend on how much funding we get as to how many houses we can build in the second phase. The abstract shape and bright color of the pink homes was meant to bring the project down to a more human scale and allow participants to see tangible progress as they donated money. While the pink houses will be gone before donations make it possible to build all 150 homes, Carter is optimistic. Our hopes are that after the second phase uh, is finished and the folks move back in, this will kind of become a self-perpetuating cycle. You know, more publicity, more funding, and ultimately more houses for the residents who, who lost their homes. While New Orleans still has a long way to go before it's restored to the way it was before August 2005, signs of improvement are everywhere. And although large-scale projects such as the Make It Right initiative are bringing in much-needed funding and attention to New Orleans, the reconstruction of the city relies on the continued enthusiasm of volunteers like those from Hampton University, who come from around the country to make a difference. I mean, I think the locals appreciate the college students, maybe not the locals who have a college bar right next to them, but certainly I think any, any um, reasonable person will, will um, acknowledge that college students in New Orleans are, are doing a hell of a lot of good for the city. Um, you know, just by, by virtue of being here and being college students. But while New Orleans residents deeply appreciate the hard work of these volunteers, why is it that students and activists seem to be the ones leading the charge? Shouldn't government infrastructure be bearing more of the responsibility? And why is it that decimated neighborhoods are only rebuilt based on the generosity of celebrities and private donors? One would think that by now the government would have stepped in and started doing more, but they haven't. And two and a half years later, the struggle to rebuild New Orleans continues. For Campus Progress in Washington, D.C., I'm Zach Pentel.